Good morning, happy new week from Sunny Q. Uh, it wasn't sunny this morning when I had to get up at eight o'clock and go to Teddington for a board away day. It was horrible and miserable. But now it's lovely, so <laughs> things are looking up. Welcome to another episode of Trophy Stupid Vlog. So we did have various things planned for this weekend. One of them was my wonderful away day, which is now done. Um, one of them was to go to my parents and um, have a big meet up and you know see family and friends of family and what have you. That's now not happening because uh, both my parents just got back from Paris and they're both feeling quite ill. <laughs> Damn you, Paris. Um, so that's on hold. So I don't think we'll be doing anything for the rest of today. Tomorrow we may go and see Crystal's family instead. So, you know. It's all about up in the air, if I'm honest. I can hear the haunting tones of an ice cream van in the distance. Which is how you know, obviously, that it's nearly summer. Um, so, yeah, today has really been, this afternoon rather, has uh, <laughs> been sitting around watching Channel 4 repeats. <laughs> Sometimes you need that, to be honest. And uh, Travel Man, especially with Richard Ayoade, which is amazing, as is everything with Richard Ayoade. He's definitely on the list of people I'd have to, if you could invite four people to a dinner party, living or dead, he would be one of the four. And he would hate it, and he wouldn't want to come. But I don't believe that they get the option to refuse <laughs> in this hypothetical situation. But that's half the reason that I'd invite him. He's ever so socially awkward and comically brilliant. Very good. This is where we've been, at my own personal carvery. That's an ancestor. Yes. He looks a little worse for wear. So it's just gone six o'clock. We're going for a bit of a walk. Making the most of the fact it's not raining. Weather hasn't been brilliant today. It's not going to be brilliant most of the week. Is it? I'll be indoors most of the time, so it won't really matter. the newly refurbished Chiswick Bridge that opened for the boat race of the day. So I haven't taken out their cabling or what have you. Welcome to the zombie apocalypse of Kew. <laughs> Literally an abandoned shopping mall. It's very strange because obviously everything closes very early on Sunday and everybody goes and leaves their shopping trolleys where they have them and they all disappear apart from three cars. <laughs> It does look somewhat abandoned. So this is a racks room. Not a place I should really be, really. Um, but I'm currently attempting to get a phone light to work. So all I have to do <laughs> is look at my magical notepad and connect the appropriate cables. There's also a patch room you have to go through after this before you get to the studio. I'm also attempting to get the internet to work by patching through there. It's all very ordered, trust me. Okay, finally, as promised, here's our new studio. Um, so this hilarious, early antiquated lump is the patch bay, um, which sits in the studio. We've had to pull out a lot of stuff to get our stuff in there. So we have the desk, which you might not recognise, but that's the same desk I had down in Gressy, Gressy Street, with the two screens running Pro Tools and uh, Premiere and what have you. Um, and then we put all our kit in here. This is still their kit, the stuff that looks like NASA circa 1960, uh, with big clunky buttons and what have you. We put in our speakers, we're going to put our TV on the wall there, and then through the window you can see where we actually record things. So there's quite a big studio, I'll show you in a sec. And then in here we've cleaned it. There was a huge desk here, which had all sorts of racks on and things, which we ripped out and put a nice sofa in. And it's getting there, but we're not, we're not quite there, but we're mostly there, we need to put a uh, proper ISDN line in, a phone line and what have you, and just do a little bit of a tidy up, but but we're mostly there, I think it's fair to say. So this is the studio you just saw through the window. Um, again, they were using it basically as storage, so um, we've just put in a little, our table and mics and chairs and things, do sound picture and what have you through there, that's the studio where I just was. And then we put a nice sofa in, and they've got these nice uh, sound damping curtains which are quite decent. Um, 
but we need to put a new floor in and probably need to change the colouring of and the wall tiles and carpet and stuff and we're still storing some bits in here but it's but it's now operational which is um it's taken a couple of weeks and a lot of building a lot of me clambering here behind the desk um trying to get things to work but it's it's working now and this building generally is uh the rnib's talking book studios so we've got uh, this that studio and this booth um, but they've still got opposite on the other side of the corridor two studios where they're doing talking books and there's a little broadcast studio at the end there where they do their radio station inside i think it's called and where we're going to put the wireless and then there's another studio down there for does post-production and then there's a sort of maze and you get to another studio in the racks room and what have you um, further on but this is yeah so all, all this floor was historically where the RNIB talking books were based and then everything above us the next like five or six floors haven't really explored yet is uh, Bowers publishing division so all their magazines and whatnot um, but it's quite nice we're right by the canal um, in Camden and um, it was a bit of a stress getting here but now we're here uh, it's less stressful it's fair to say Hello there and good evening. I, I'm recording this primarily because I've just dismantled my iPhone just down to the screws, literally, to put in a new charging cable. It is the most horrible thing that you should ever do with your iPhone and I would strongly discourage you from doing it. Go to the Apple Store. That said, if this works, I am obviously a genius. Five minutes later, it is clear that I'm a genius. Yes you may leave your praise in the comments. Um, but yeah, seriously, don't take your iPhone apart. I'm not joking. The only thing that is easily changeable on an iPhone 5 like this one is the screen and everything else is a complete nightmare. Um, so there we go. I'm gonna go to bed now in celebration. So it's Thursday evening. It's essentially my Friday because I'm having tomorrow off to do some admin and invoicing and what have you. So, I can now relax. Well, I can, as long as I don't fall in the canal or get hit by a cyclist or accosted by one of our local friendly drug dealers. They are quite friendly. They're kind of Camden's version of corner boys. <laughs> Excuse me, would you like any weed? Um, anyway, so I'm going home now to start my very long weekend, all four days of it. So let's talk about the biggest thing that I haven't really mentioned and the real meat of this week's vlog. Uh, one week today, uh, is the general election in the United Kingdom. And that's the 7th of May. Now, I'll be putting this up a couple of days before, so hopefully you'll see this in advance. I'll never tell you how to vote, but I will tell you you must vote. Uh, the reason for that is quite simple, especially if you're under 40. Um, policies are made based upon the people that will likely vote, and those are always the over 50s. So the reason there's not enough policies addressing issues for younger people because they don't bother to vote. So if you want a government or a political party to take any notice of you at all, you have to vote. If you become a very big demographic, then they'll listen. That's the first thing. Secondly, don't tell me that it doesn't make any difference. That is complete rubbish. It makes a huge amount of difference. In the last five years, we've had reform to the, both the top and bottom end of the income tax. Um, we've had huge pension changes. We've had uh, changes to the welfare and the way that it's paid and the, the maximum amount that you can claim. We've had constant conversations about whether the country should be part of the EU and migration and immigration, although I think these conversations are, personally, I think they're hugely warped. Um, but if any changes happen to that in the next five years, they could dramatically change the look and feel of the society you currently live in. So yes, it makes a huge difference voting, and it's very important. It is a terrible voting system we have, it is archaic, and it doesn't reflect the nature of modern politics. But again, we can't change it unless people actually vote. You need to vote. <laughs> That's the key part of this. Then you can campaign for things like real political reform which is massively, massively overdue. Once you get a decent voting system, then you can start to properly enfranchise voters. That's what I believe, and that's why I think you should go out and vote. But look, even if you don't want to change the voting system, um, for whatever reason, then there's still plenty of reasons to vote, not least the ones I've just listed. Things do change in a, a political, um, in a 
parliament and a lifespan of a government. Dramatic things. And they will mostly be affecting your wallet and your bank balance. <laughs> so get out there and do something about it. Lastly, and I think this is reasonably important, when you cast a vote for whichever political party, don't just think about how it affects you as an individual and things directly related to you, but think about how it affects society as a whole and the environment in which you live, because that is equally um, important. But So just think about the larger consequences. But honestly, I would rather that you went out and voted for a political party that I hated than you didn't vote at all. That's what I would say, and that's where I'm going to leave it. Happy Friday. So, as I mentioned before, this is the first weekday I've had off since the very beginning of March, which is quite unusual as a freelancer. And I have actually worked three Saturdays since then. Although we did have a little trip to Paris, which was nice. So I'm trying to just, you know, relax and do some invoicing. <laughs> All the fun things you can do. Um, now, hopefully this afternoon, after I've had lunch, we're going to nip into the gardens have a bit of a look at the bluebells. If I don't make that, we're definitely going in on Sunday, so hopefully the weather will hold. Um, and I was also hoping to go into Richmond so that I could see whether they can service my very old East German watch. So many exciting things to do today that don't involve sitting in a bunker. For the first time in three months, made it back into my little glade woodland glade. Look, the bluebells are out. It's lovely. It's ever so nice this time of year. Still not a lot of leaves on the trees, actually. I mean, these trees are a bit more sheltered, but it's ever so nice. And of course, there's nobody here, because there's never anybody here. I can't really explain the feeling I get when I come into queue, and the reason I keep coming back. Um, I suppose it must be the feeling you have if you have a very large garden of your own. It's not like going out to a place and visiting somewhere else. It's like you are in your home. That's the best way of describing it. Um, and therefore, it's fantastic. So, I've been into Richmond. I've had them take a look at my watches, which are both in quite good order, but cost nearly £200 if I want to service each one, which is a fair amount more than I paid for either. So, that's probably not going to happen in the short term unless there's a problem. Had a look for some Dolia silverware, bought some kimchi, and now I'm walking back because the buses are not there when I need them to be. So all in all, very productive afternoon. Uh, and very pleasant to have the day to myself. So I'm just enjoying, enjoying the journey.